we have a 10-bit drone now, you guys. We just got an update, or I just downloaded the update. We got it a couple days ago, and it was kind of a surprise. We have 10-bit video on the Mini 3 Pro, which actually makes it more pro right now. So I'll talk about that in just a second. But what I want to do is my first Mini 3 Pro video, my review video, it has done so awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. And there's been a lot of questions on that video in the comments. Like, I know that um, video was pretty comprehensive, but you guys still have a lot of questions. And so I'm gonna answer some of those questions today and uh, hopefully you guys get some more information. I think a lot of you are gonna be getting your Mini 3 Pro like today, today's Friday, or maybe tomorrow. Like I know a lot of people have gotten the shipping notification. Now, whether that means they're gonna be getting it soon or not, I don't know, but, uh, but I think as more people start to get this drone, there's gonna be more and more questions. You know, we can't cover everything in these initial review videos. And so I like answering questions like this, going through the uh, frequently asked questions. And so that's what I'm gonna to do today. And I'm gonna talk about the 10 bit on this drone. So let's get right to it. First one I have here is from Moby L. Joy. And he says, maybe I missed it, but doesn't the gimbal rotate upwards a couple of degrees on the drone? I thought that was pretty significant. And yes, Moby, it, it is very significant. And it's more than a couple of degrees. It's actually 60 degrees. And so you can tilt that thing way, way up. And it really makes for some interesting angles. Like you can be a lot more creative being able to put the camera up like that. I know Billy Kyle has done some really cool shots with it on social media, on uh, Instagram, I think. But, you know, and this drone is not a commercial drone, but you could potentially use this for like under bridge inspections or getting under things and inspecting things from below. And, uh, you know, it's not meant for that, but you certainly could do that with this drone. So yeah, that's really, really cool. Next question was from David McFly Mims. He says, does the remote controller connect to an external monitor HDMI through USB? And no, it does not. There's no external connectivity. You can't like stream your video to any mobile device or anything like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't have that. I don't think it will ever have that. It would be really nice to be able to do that, but you cannot do that with the RC controller. Okay, I just wanted to cut in here and talk about this 10-bit update that we had with the recent firmware update. So what I did is I went out and I recorded here of the baseball field. This is before the update. This is an 8-bit um, 4K30. And then what I did is I brought it home and I updated it. And then here's a clip in 10-bit afterwards. And so this is decent alike. And there's the 8, there's the 10. All I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the auto and that's going to, uh, Premiere Pro is just going to edit it in the way that it thinks it should be. And I did the same with the 10-bit. Now, you can't really see much of a difference here. But go back and watch the beginning of this video and just look at the difference between these two. This 10-bit update on this little drone is, is really significant. And it's going to make editing just so much more fun. Next, we have David Carr. He says, hello, great video. Thank you. Can you tell us what the memory in the transmitter is used for? I have the Mini 2 and I'm not aware of memory space in the transmitter. So the RC controller that comes with the Mini 3 Pro has a memory card slot and that memory card is used for uh, screen recordings, capturing the screen, you can do a photo capture of the screen, and also for transferring the files from the controller, from the drone to your controller. Now, right now you can only transfer photos and eventually I think you'll be able to transfer videos but it's going to be very slow. So here's something that you all need to be aware of if you aren't aware of it. Quick transfer is something that they have on the Mini 3 Pro. And what that means is you don't even need the controller. Like, you can turn on the drone and transfer the files through the DJI Fly app right on to your photo album on your phone or onto the, um, onto the album of the app. And it's like super, super fast. Like DC Rainmaker just put out a video today and it's only like a six minute video. I'm gonna put it right up here. I want you guys to watch it because I think this is really, really big that you don't have to have the controller turned on to transfer your files. And it transfers big files, like two, three gig uh, files in a matter of seconds. So watch that video from DC Rainmaker. I'll put it down in the video description as well. He did a really nice job. It's really succinct and just gets right to the point and I love that about him. So check that out. Quick transfer is cool. It's the only way to do it. I mean, I wouldn't go through the re remote no matter what. So. But, uh, but that's what that card is for. Next, we have Sharman Sultana says, can I use the RC Pro with the Mini 3 Pro? And unfortunately, no, you cannot. The only controllers that the Mini 3 Pro works with right now is the RC and the RCN1. 
And there's been a lot of speculation, especially with the leakers, that eventually it's going to work with the RC Pro. They're thinking maybe September, but that's just the leakers talking. And, the, you know, sometimes they're pretty close on what they're talking about, but um, I haven't heard anything. DJI hasn't said anything. None of us that I know, none of the people that I know have heard anything. So maybe, I think it would be pretty cool because I know a lot of people have the RC Pro, but right now, those are the only two controllers, RC and RCN1, that it works with. So next question we have from Michael. Can you please check what the max shutter speed length is? The manual says two seconds, but no drone has had it that low since the Spark. Um, all the Air drones had eight seconds, Mini 1, 2, and even the SE have four seconds. And yes, so right now it's only two seconds, but I really think that's gonna change. Like, um, you know, for hyperlapses and things like that, you wanna have those longer, um, those longer shutters. Now, we did get this update with the 10-bit, and I did notice on a hyperlapse I did the other morning that you can do uh, three second. You know, before it was two seconds, now it's three seconds. So that's one little change, but I, you still, when you're doing a normal recording, I think it's still only two seconds, but I know, I'm almost positive that that's gonna improve, so. But yeah, if you wanna do long exposure photography, you can't really do it, you know, because it only has two seconds, so. But I think it's coming. Next question is from Sully's Drone Media. Hope I'm saying that right. Great detail, great detailed video, thanks mate. Quick question about the controller. Uh, there's talk that the hands would get in the way of the screen being below the joysticks. Did you find that anytime your screen view was obstructed? No. There is no obstruction, there's no inconvenience. I mean, it's, I know it, it seems counterintuitive to have it like this, but I have never had a problem. And, and if you, if the screen was on top, It'd be really awkward, you know, your control sticks would be on the bottom. Plus, it would have to be kind of tall. It would have to be taller, so you'd have something to grip onto. So, I know it's it seems narrow, but I've never had a problem. My thumbs don't get in the way, my palms. Um, I Like I said in my review video, I think only people that have really large hands, you know, this part of their thumb might get on the screen a little bit, but then you just have to change your grip a little bit. No, um, I know it seems like the, that would be a problem, but it's not a problem at all, at least not for me. So Gilbert Guerin says, nice review. Could you give an idea of the size of the files in 4K? 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Which capacity of SD card would you recommend to buy? Any specific requirement in terms of the card? Um, I put my recommended card uh, in the video description of my initial review and also put it in this one if you want to check the description for the card that I use. You know, a lot of people don't like use, using a 512 gigabyte card um, because if you lose the card or if the drone crashes or lose it or whatever, you've lost all of those files. But that's why I think I've learned my lesson because <laughs> I lost my GoPro four years ago and I didn't download the files to download those files. I mean, as soon as you're done recording, bring it home and download them. And especially with the quick transfer now, you can download them right to your phone. But, um, but you know, most people like to use the 256 card. I'm gonna put up on the screen here, kind of some, I give you an idea of the, of the file sizes of certain you know video lengths and photos and things like that. I'm not gonna go over everything, but these are some of the, uh, this, this will give you an idea of how big they are. So for sure you need a 256, and I, I recommend getting a 512, especially because they're getting cheaper now. So, uh, Pixel and Pay says, is the aperture f1.7 fixed or changeable? It's uh, changeable, it's fixed, it's f1.7, and that's why I think we're gonna probably see a lot of third-party ND filters for this drone. Um, you don't want to be able to change that a little bit. So, but yeah, it's a fixed F1.7. Aldrin Lozaro says, can you use master shots or other quick shots on vertical mode? No, as of right now, you cannot. Um, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to in the future. So I'm not sure why they didn't add that right away, but, but I think that would be pretty nice for some of the social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram Reels to be able to do that. But for now, you're gonna have to crop it, so. But yeah, I think that's another thing that'll come. Uh, Jenna C, Jenna, thank you being f so awesome. Awesome support of the channel since the beginning. She says, if you have the Air 2S, would you buy the Mini 3? No. Um, I mean, I, I, should say, I shouldn't say no right away. The only benefit I would think is to, just to get under that 250 grams if you're worried about having to register your drone or, or um, you know, remote ID, you know, if you're worried about that, then yes. But the Air 2S, I still think is the best drone for the money right now. And I think it will be for a very long time. It's so good, you guys. The Air 2S is an amazing drone. If you have it, there, there's no way I would 
trade it or sell it and get the Mini 3 Pro. It's just, it's such a good drone, you guys. But yeah, if you like that smaller size and that lighter weight, then maybe. Paul Anthony Javier says, awesome review. Do you recommend this drone to beginners? Yes, I think the Mini 3 Pro would be a great drone for beginners. Um, the obstacle avoidance is there. The awesome picture quality, the awesome video quality. Now we have 10-bit, so it's even better. Um, of course, beginners probably don't really care about 10-bit, but but if you get to that point where you want to edit 10-bit footage, you, you can. I mean, it's there. Um, the awesome battery life. So yeah, it's a great drone for beginners. The downside is most people probably don't want to spend $1,000 for their first drone. I mean, I did five years ago with the Mavic Pro and it's the best decision that I ever made, but it's not for everybody. You know, people might want to just dip their toes in, spend a little less money. So then I would recommend the Mini 2, uh, but then you're missing out on the obstacle avoidance and the better image quality. So uh, Joe Vanderhoff. So he asks about variable aperture. I already said, uh, answered that one, but does it have cine or tripod mode for slower flight? And yes, it does. It has cine mode, which is okay, but it's not as good as tripod mode. I know Philip Bloom did a video about how he really wants tripod mode back. Like you can adjust the yaw and, and, and everything like that, but you can't adjust the speed of the drone with cine mode. With tripod mode, it was, it was much better. It was much smoother. It was, you could much slower. You had more control. So I have to agree with Philip when he says bring back tripod mode. So DJI, I don't know why you got rid of it. I don't understand why you changed a good thing, but tripod mode was very good. So I hope it comes back. JHRC Hobby. I'm just going to kind of cut this down. He says, uh, one question I still have is the transmission range or quality for the new remote noticeably better than the standard remote when paired with the Mini 3. And no, I tested both with the RC and the RC N1 controller and I didn't do a range test but I went out to this bridge by my house okay and I got I want to say I'm not sure exactly but I want to say maybe 100 or 200 feet further with the RC N1 and then you know before I lost some signal strength before I lost some bars so I honestly don't think there's a real significant difference between the two I haven't fully tested that I'm sure someone will or maybe someone has already um, but I don't, I didn't experience that. One thing that I do want to mention is I just flew to that same location today. And one thing that I've noticed is when it's hazy, like today, there's a lot of moisture in the air. It's kind of hazy out. The signal strength is not good at all. Like I barely made it to 1500 feet before I had a couple of bars drop today. And I've flown twice that um, in the same location on a day that's not like this. So I think the haze and the moisture in the air really does affect the signal strength no matter which controller that you're using. Uh, Martin Ramirez, I saw you were flying in the snow. Is the Mini 3 Pro waterproof or water resistant? No, it is not. I should not fly in the snow, but I do that because I want to show you guys that it's possible. And uh, but, but I wouldn't recommend it. So this there's, there's no waterproofing at all, no water resistance. I wouldn't fly this in any kind of moisture. Fog even is going to affect those electronics. And especially because this drone really really needs airflow and really sucks in air to keep it cool and it's going to be sucking out the moisture into those electronics so no i don't recommend flying in any kind of moisture with it so and then one other question that i want to address that i didn't get any comments on but a lot of people have been wondering about the overheating issues some of some of the initial reviewers including myself had the drone get kind of hot when it was sitting still and i know that some other um, creators have had the same problem I've never had a problem while I'm flying, even on hotter days. So yesterday it was almost 80 degrees at Fahrenheit and I was flying, no problems. Um, but the day that I was testing it, um, I left it sit on the table. It was 70 degrees, but the sun was directly on it and I got the overheat warning. So I had to let it sit for a while before I could fly it. So just know that this drone needs airflow. I mean, it, it always needs airflow to stay cool. So if you're gonna turn it on, and then fiddle around getting something ready, don't. You're gonna, it's gonna overheat and you're gonna have to turn it off, wait for it to cool, and then you're gonna be able to fly after that. So it's gonna delay your flying time if you turn this on too soon. So just know that if it's hot out, don't turn it on until right before you're ready to fly. So, but, uh, but otherwise I've had no other overheating issues. So, yeah. So there's a few questions that I had. You guys, I wanna give away something. I have two coupon codes for DJI Care Refresh. I have a one year, I have two coupon codes for a one year Care Refresh for the Mini 3 Pro. 
and I'm gonna give that to one of you guys. Of course, I hope you have a Mini 3 Pro. It's not gonna work for you if you don't have a Mini 3 Pro, but um, but all I have to do, all you have to do is comment down below. I, I don't wanna make anything too hard, but here's the deal, you guys, and I, it sucks that we have to say this, all, the, all of us YouTubers have to say this now, is if someone comments with my icon, with my picture, my logo, and says, hey, you won, contact me on WhatsApp, or hey, you won, contact me on Telegram, and don't, it's not, it's not me, it's a scammer, and they're, they're, they're covering YouTube, like they're, it's absurd, and, uh, and YouTube hasn't done anything about it, I don't know why, maybe it's more challenging than I think, I'm not an engineer, but you would think that they have it figured out by now, it's been going on for months. So I will never ask you to WhatsApp me. I will never ask you to contact me through Telegram. Um, I will tell you in the comments if you won, and then we'll communicate through through email, and and make sure that it's me. Make sure that check mark. Make sure that person that's commenting to you that has my logo has a check mark. That means I'm verified. That means it's actually me talking to you. So just remember that for any YouTube video that you watch, not just mine. No YouTuber is gonna contact you through WhatsApp or through Telegram. These people are lowlifes. Anyway, enough about that. So, uh, and then I'll give those away in about a week. I'll just let you know and send you the code and then you got a free uh, year of DJI Care Refresh. So, if you have any more questions about this drone, let me know down in the comments. Hit the like if I gave you anything of value today. I wanna thank you for watching the video. Have a great day, and for those of you getting your Mini 3 Pro, fly safe. Did you know that I crashed my Mini 3 Pro? If you wanna see how I did it, go ahead and watch. It's coming here in three, two, one.